Hi, this is Kara, and this is DIY on the house. Today we're going to show you how to transform a dining chair. These are chairs that we've had in our house. We don't have a point of reference, but it's been at least a dozen years. And our style has changed. This is more of a Western look. We're going to transform it and change it more into a country look. So uh, the big picture is we're going to take off the little decorative tacks. We're going to TSP it, which is a product that will get the years of grime and oil off of it. Um, sand down any imperfections, paint it, and upholster the seat. So the first thing we need to do is do some TSP, so I'll get to uh, get that out and show you what that is. Okay, so uh, the first step is TSP, and this comes in a lot of different manufacturers, in tubs, in bags, in boxes. We've used it numerous times over the years, especially when we painted our kitchen cupboards. Um, what it is, it's a granule that you dilute in water, and it gives you the directions on the container. Um, I would just suggest mix it up in small quantities. It gets really, really gross, uh, the water, because it's taken off a lot of grime. Um, so just do a little bit at a time. So for our project, um, I'm just going to use a glass bowl and the, the dilution on here said a quarter cup to two gallons, but I've just been using two teaspoons of TSP and stirring it into the warm water and uh, dissolving it. And then you'll need to take a pretty stiff brush, just start scrubbing and taking off years and years of grime. First thing before I start the TSP is these decorative tacks, we need to pull them off. I have the TSP all mixed up and I just dip my brush in here and you start going in circular motions and it will not take long for you to see about 15 years of oil coming off the chair. It really dries out the wood, but you can physically see when you have got through the layer of dirt on it. So you just keep working at it, and you're gonna do this process over the entire chair. And so what I see what I mean, this, the water just becomes really, really gross. So I couldn't imagine having two gallons of that. So then at this point, I just take a rag and Honest to pieces, look at the, the difference in the wood. So I'm going to go ahead um, and take the, the seat off of this and continue it through. I wanted to show you, look at this is where um, you naturally grab this chair. It has a um, three rungs, but our hands obviously would grab this spot. And the underneath side is just as bad. So I'm going to make sure that all of this is super clean because if there's something that we have experienced over the years, that paint has to have a really clean surface to adhere to. want to wipe that off and show you the difference. Here is where the grease and grime still is and here it's cleaned off. Okay here's one of the chairs that I had already um, cleaned uh, prior to the video so you can I don't know how much you can see but it is very um, dry because uh, I, I really cleaned hard on these scrubbing but as you can see it does leave a little pinhole. I think the paint is going to cover that up uh, nicely so I'm not going to worry about that. I initially thought I was going to fill it but they're just so tiny. Uh, so I have it ready um, and I'm going to do a light sand over the entire chair, uh, clean it off and hand this project over to Ross and he's going to paint it. 
Then it comes back to me and we're going to put an upholstered seat on them. So Kara's got everything TSP'd and cleaned up, all the grease is off. And uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to uh, paint it. And one little trick that uh, you can do if you're going to be painting chairs, obviously put the tarps down so you don't wreck everything in uh, concrete or in your garage or whatever. But we're going to take some finished nails and we're actually going to attach them, uh, nail them to the bottom of the chairs. And I'll show you real quick. And that'll, what it'll do, uh, it'll elevate the chair off the ground so, you know, when the paint dries, it's not going to be sticking to the tarp. So you just tack those in. You don't have to whack them in very hard. Nails are all put on, so we're just going to rotate it up. And voila, it sticks off the ground. The paint that I'm using, I got from Harbor Freight. I uh, got a coupon. These are usually on sale. They're always like 15 bucks. But I had a super coupon, which is in a booklet that they sent, for $9. Um, I actually sprayed a couple vehicles with uh, these paint guns. They actually are not bad paint guns. They work pretty good. You do have to thin down the paint, maybe about uh, 75 uh, paint and then 25% water. It just, it just depends how it runs off. You, after a while, you kind of get a feel to it. So I'll go ahead and mix some paint up, and uh, we'll get to spraying. It needs to be, it needs to be fairly thin for that uh, that paint gun to go. Um, Amazon also has paint guns at a real reasonable price. Uh, pick them up for 17 bucks, 20 bucks. That's actually a pretty good price for a gun that you can shoot. And then the compressor I use is a 75 gallon, so I have continuous air, never have an issue. So it's that's not too bad. It's if only if you can see it running. Okay, on, the, on these guns, you always want to make sure the vent is open. If the vent isn't open, it'll actually pull um, vacuum in this cup and it, it'll, it won't release any paint coming out. So you have to make sure, sometimes I'll even leave the, leave the top off, but I just kind of leave it on loose. So when you're spraying, it, uh, spraying paint, you need to go into an even motion um, if you're going to be using a sprayer. And that's, you go straight across, you don't arc it or anything. If you arc it, it actually leaves less paint or more paint on the ends. Actually, leaves more paint on the ends and less in the middle. So you want to go even and then overspray onto the tarp or whatever and just make sure you carry on through past the end of the uh, board or whatever chair. Uh, and also make sure you use a good mask. Uh, this stuff, once it does go, comes out of the gun, it's, it's aerosol at that point. It goes into the air and every time you suck it in, it uh, doesn't do you any good. So a good mask um, and we'll just go ahead and get going. There are instructions in the booklet or otherwise on YouTube how to set these guns up. It's super simple uh, and they're really forgiving. So oh, let's go ahead and get going. chairs are painted now we get to upholster the seats and uh, what I have is um, this seat we went ahead and painted the seat because I just didn't know down the road if I ever wanted to change it so um, we have the seat you cut the foam to the same size as the wood uh, this is just one inch foam. You can get it um, anywhere, um, like Joann's Hobby Lobby. I actually got this at uh, Walmart, um, and they just sell it by the bag. Uh, so you cut uh, the foam to the same size as your wood, and you place it face down. And the fabric we picked 
what is just a really lightweight vinyl. Um, I would say if this piece of furniture is going to get a, a ton of use, I would go for a little something a little bit thicker. But I just liked the look of this. So we have um, the vinyl, and you c need to cut it so that you have at least a good inch, inch and a half fabric all the way around when you pull up your um, your material around your wood. So to get started you're going to need to have at least half inch long staples and um, my mom and dad used to have an upholstery shop way back in the 80s. So this is an electric staple gun from then. So you will see through here that it does malfunction a few times and I'll show you what I do for to make sure it's nice and secure. But you'll, you can get um, yeah, any even the the handheld. My uh, Ross uses one called Sure Shot. So you just need a staple gun and about half inch long staples. When you're um, stapling fabric on, always go opposite of what you just did. So you'd put a staple here, then you put a staple here. If you put a staple here, then you put a staple here. So you just go opposite all of the time. So we'll just get started so you can see what I'm talking about. And I put the staples um, at an angle and usually a couple in the spot. So I did it on that side and now I pull it around and pull it nice and tight. And I now pull it on this side and do the same thing. Okay, so that staple didn't go in all the way and that one didn't go in at all. There we go. So if your staple, because uh, we've done enough projects that this is common, just tap it in with a hammer to make sure it's nice and secure. So then turn the project and we're going to put one on this side. Yeah, that went fine. And we turn it around and go to the opposite side. And you just keep doing that process. Now I'm back to this side. It has something to do with the grain on this end. It just doesn't like to go in. So I did here. And now I have to do across from it. Okay, so now we're ready to do the corners. On a corner, you need to pull it nice and tight and just pull up the center point and put one staple clear up to the, towards the end of your fabric. So then you take the corner and you just fold it so that you have a nice uh, fold and put one staple in there as well. you take your other side and fold it in and put a staple in there. Okay. So there is what the corner would look like folded into each other. And so now I'm going to reinforce that with a couple more staples. And you repeat it on this next one. Pull in the point. Put one staple. Pull in this side. And if the fabric is a little long, like this one might be a little long, cut off the tip so that you can reduce some of your bulk. 
there. And now fold this one into each other. Nice. Okay, so now we have our other corners. On this one, <coughs> every chair is going to be different. This one has cutouts that, that go um, in the uprights. And so this one, I treated it the same way. I thought first I was going to cut a slit, um, but then started analyzing it a little bit more that I didn't want to have a, um, a rough edge. So I'm going to just pull the point in. Pull over this edge. And pull over this edge. So as you can see, there's fabric that is loose here. But when you put it on the chair here in a few minutes, I'll show you a picture, it slips down real nice. So you just need to make sure it's nice and secure underneath. Okay, I'm gonna do this corner. And fold these as an envelope as well. And I'm just gonna, you just fold to get the excess out of the way. So. Just kind of um, work it with your fingers. Keep your finger away from the staple gun. Oh, that went in nice. Okay. Okay, so there is a completed seat. So I have one more to do, so I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll put them together and show you the finished product. I just can't even tell you. Look at the difference. Look at the transformation between the before and the after of these chairs. I am just so, so in love with these. They took about $75, I think, between the material, the foam, and the paint, and we did get a little bit stronger paint. We got a cabinet paint um, so that it wouldn't chip and uh, was easy to wipe off. So uh, just a few little uh, steps and we have a brand new dining set. So I thank you so much for joining DIY on the house. If you can subscribe, give us the thumbs up and check back often for more projects. Thanks so much for joining. Mm -hmm.